One of the problems with older homes is the closets are super small. In our home, one fix that we did was we took two closets and combined them into one. Let me show you how we did that. This is my son's room here, and here's the closet. His closet was this big, and you can see here on the floor, this is where we removed a partition wall between this closet and this closet. So we've already done the demo work, and I'm going to show you the finishing of it. What we did previously was this was the closet to the master, I guess the master bedroom. Each one had its own pull chain light. So that's one thing I'll be dealing with. You can see this is where I boarded up. This was the opening, the doorway into our master bedroom from this closet. So what we decided to do was wall this up for the master bedroom. We did master bedroom closets, which I'll show you a picture of. They're just like an Ikea wall of closets. So that way we could close off this and open this up into one large closet for this room. So now this room has a walk-in closet and our master has a whole wall of closets. The first thing I'm going to do is the electrical work. And what I'm going to do here is take out this fixture and that fixture over there. They're both just constant power fixtures with these pull chain lights on them. So I'm going to remove them and then run wiring so that I can hook both of them up to the same circuit and onto a switch. Now the switch, what I'm going to do is call up in the attic and I'm going to run a whip down through this wall here, and then I'm gonna cut on the other side a hole for a, a switch box and put it in right here. What I'm using for light fixtures is these four inch LED deals where they requ don't require a box, it's canless. So <clears throat> what this looks like is it's two pieces. There's this uh, LED ballast thing, and it's an electrical box, so I can knock this out. Um, on, on the first fixture, I can knock this out and have it attached to the actual conduit and, and then do my wiring inside there, the hot and the neutral. Uh, it's got a second knockout, which I can then use to put the whip that's going to go to the next fixture over there. And then, of course, the next fixture, I'll just have one knocked out with the whip. And I'll have these. It looks like you can attach them like to your framing up in the attic. So I'll have a couple screws attaching these to the joists, and then I'll put the insulation over it, and then we can come back from down, uh, downstairs, uh, and then once we get the four inch hole cut out uh, and of the new drywall, we can go ahead and install this. So I'll just keep this, go ahead and wire these up in the attic and show you that. Okay, I'm up in the attic here. This is not pleasant. Um, this piece of conduit here is where the wire is going. It's going into that uh, outlet. Sorry, I can't get the light in there. Where the end of that conduit is going into that outlet for that pull chain light. And then that one is whipped to this one right here, the other one. And again, that's constant power. So I need a switchable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably Oh, that's probably, that's helpful there. See where that, those, the little screw union is? I'm going to take that apart and I'm going to put in a four inch box and I'm going to break the, the hot wire and that's what's going to go into my switch. So I'm going to use this jacketed whip as the switch wire. I'm going to drill a hole right by my screwdriver on the other side of that uh, joist. And that's where I'm going to drop it in. That should go right inside the wall next to the uh, closet. And that will give me the wiring for my switch. Okay, well, sorry, I've got a mask on because it's so dusty up here. I'm almost done in the attic here. As you can see, I've got uh, that broken away and a box added in there. And I've got some wiring in there. You can see that, well, maybe you can't, but let me try to get in closer. You can see that I've got... This is the, the, the switch is the whip that's coming in here. The white wire from the whip is going into the black wire. And then the, uh, uh, the black wire from the rip, whip is going to the black wire going back to the uh, right side of the conduit. And then the two neutrals from conduit to conduit are tied together. So remember, since that's a switch, 
I've got white, green, and black wires. I don't need the green. All I need is the the switch wires. So white to the um, hot, and then the black to the other end of the hot, and then I'll wire that accordingly on the switch. Now on the other side, it's hard to see, but I got that uh, the uh, LED box mounted to the stud, and I've got all the wires tied together, the black and the white wires, the three black wires and the three white wires tied together. Why is there three? Well, there's going to be the two wires going to the fixture itself, which as you can see is coming out of the box. There's just enough wire there to fit through the hole. Um, so all I have to do is plug it in, a little connector, this little connector here. All I've got to do is uh, plug that in when I get the light in on the other side. But uh, yeah, over there, I've got the uh, black, the hot neutral black and white tied to the fixture and then tied to this whip. This whip is coming here and this is the final circuit I need to make for this uh, other light. So I'll run this into this little whip fitting I may, uh, have here and I'll probably just mount the box. Sorry, it's shaky and one-handed. Mount the box like some, something like this and I'll have enough room for the wire to go down to the switch. So I'm gonna finish that up and then I'll go downstairs to do the drywall before I put in the lights. Okay, I didn't film this, but I obviously cut a hole in this wall here. There's our switch wired up, just the white and the black wires. We've got our, our ground is the actual box itself since it's metal and then from the I had to cut a little bit of this you know an access for me to get in there but there it is from the back side with the rough in box the wings it's mounted solidly and the whip is going in there all right now I'm going to turn on the electrical and we'll test out the lights nice we now have lights I'm about to drill the four in inch holes for the lights. You can see that the instructions say it's critical that the hole is the diameter should not exceed four and, four and a quarter inches. And I'm using this. I've, I've tried to use the, these adjustable hole saws in the past and they've always sucked. But it's drywall. I mean, it couldn't, I don't know, we'll see. Well, apparently it's good enough for drywall, so I'm happy with that. So a new, a little piece of drywall is up, just a half inch drywall. I'm going over the plaster with, with half inch drywall. So get that first light installed and then I'll keep moving on. Maybe I'll finish the ceiling tonight, we'll see. So to get it into the wall, obviously, just like a lot of, you can imagine, you fold both these springs up on each side, get one started over the drywall, and then flip the other one up and just shove it in and then both springs will flip back down and hold it in place. Whoop, almost fell. Okay, you can see the other one is installed. Okay, we're back at it today. Uh, we're going to do the walls. And all we're going to do is kind of patch and match with the plaster. There's a couple different ways you could do things with an older home that has plaster. Uh, you can see here, I was able to remove the plaster and leave the lath strips intact. Um, and what I did to get a nice crisp line on the plaster was I used a multi-tool like this with a half moon blade and just zipped it up and, and straightened out a, a nice line there to match my drywall to. So if you leave the lath strips in place, using half inch drywall is usually best uh, to match up with the plaster. You can see that that's pretty much flush right there. Uh, at least in my house. Now whenever I've had to do knockout walls where I had to do like a sledgehammer knockout where I had to knock out the lath strips as well and match it up to the original plaster, I used 5 8 inch drywall and that matched up with both the plaster and the lath. So, um, but in this case it's, it's going to be half inch. Now this is a bare stud that was added in later. What I'll probably do is take some of the scrap lath strips that I took off of the demoed wall and I'll just vertically nail those in and that'll give it the necessary bump out I need to make this perfectly flush here and uh, and then we'll be able to lay a, you know large pieces of 
half inch across this. So let's get started on that. All right, well, the drywall is basically done. It matched up pretty well. Um, I've got it, the drywall screwed in and I used mesh tape on most of the, uh, the ridges there. You see I did on the ceiling too and on the other side. So there's mesh tape. I like to use mesh tape on flat seams, but then I like to use the um, paper tape on the corners like up there. first coat is in. It doesn't look great. I'm not very good at drywalling, but um, I'm just going to take a flat blade and just, you know, just knock off those ridges. And then, um, yeah, just take a blade and knock off the ridge. And then um, do a little bit of sanding with 120, I think it is. And I got a little corner sponge, it's a 150 grit for doing the corners. So I'll just uh, sand a bit and then put on a wet second coat. The worst part is this is a little, this area here is a little, a little bit of a ridge there. Um, but the ceilings, probably one, one coat on the ceiling and some sanding and that'll be done. Quick update on the closet project here. It's been couple weeks. Um, first off, the walls are all done, you know, lighting's all in. Um, this, uh, you can see there's a pretty nasty ridge here, but this is one of those times when my wife was actually like, nah, just let's, let's just slap it on, let's just paint it, let's just, it's just a closet. Doesn't, we're not too concerned that the walls are perfectly smooth. We got our 24 inch by 40, I'm gonna say 40 inch by 24 inch cabinet. This is the same type of cabinet that's in our bedroom, just with no doors. And it's got a varying levels of shelving. Now this was interesting because there's hardly any space on either side. So if you do these Ikea cabinets, um, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this. Basically what we had to do was put the sides onto the base and kind of fold the walls in just slightly enough not to mess up the actual you know uh, fasteners and and wood and we were able to get it through the door through the door and then and then into place because you know you can't turn it there's so little room in here so but luckily we had enough room at the top to where i could bend out the the sides again very carefully without tearing out those anchors that are in that, you know, be the, you know, chipboard and was able to get the top piece installed 
now what's these cheap IKEA cabinets the way they hold their square and structure is by a backing board and you can see on this other one it's this backing board it's it's like a thin just a thin piece of you know hard board really but that's what keeps the square well I couldn't put that in there because um, I had to like actually climb through there to do you know the things and then we pushed it back so what I basically what I did was I put the backing in so if you have to do this on your own let me see if I can see it put the backing in we did one of these uh, split shelves where you can you can add this little riser into the bottom here and then that creates like a split to where you can do dual you know uh, dual shelves and drawers and so what I did was up to here I went, I climbed in behind it, put the backing board in back there, and had it squared up up to here. And then you can see from the rest of the way, you could just see the B board that's on the closet wall. Now, um, and then I was able to, you know, screw it in with butterfly anchors up at the top and square it up myself and, and get it all installed. So now it's in, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in good shape and it's usable. I left the B board into the side and the back here. Uh, only because it was glued in and I felt like I would just tear out all the plaster if I removed it. Now here, right by where the door is, the door trim, um, this is where the wall came out. You can see from the floor, that's where the wall, the partition wall was. So what I did was I took a scrap piece of beadboard and I just glued it into here. And then what I'll do is I'll just caulk it and paint it and just caulk it all in. and. That will kind of finish out that wall and I just pieced in a little piece of baseboard, an old piece of baseboard there. Pieced in, or actually bought a new piece, of that. all I used was 1x6 and just bought a new piece of 1x6, primed it and we slapped some paint on it, got it into there and then later I fixed that corner because that was just trash, the, the plaster all had chipped apart and then um, and then I you know finished out the, the molding. So pretty much all the baseboards done so the next step here is the flooring and what I did so far was what we decided to do is not go back in with carpet uh, w this is just plank meaning it's the subfloor it's one inch one by five planking flooring um, a pine planking so it's not hardwood floor um, so I'm not gonna finish it like a hardwood floor what I'm gonna do is just sand the paint and sand it down um, to where I can reprime it and then we bought a flooring grade paint uh, and so we're just gonna paint it and leave that plank flooring and for the carpet what I did was I just cut it with a blade and cut all the you know tack strips out and then I just put this piece of um, you know steel um, edging onto it so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go ahead and sand the flooring and uh, and then uh, you know and then get that all sanded and, and primed and then I'm gonna finish priming all that and then we'll just touch up all the paint.